St. Martin or St. Martin, depending on which side of the island you're on, is the smallest island in the world to be partitioned between two different nations, a French side and a Dutch side. Technically, it's two different countries and attracts more than two million visitors every year. Its airport, Princess Juliana International, is truly unique because on one side you have a public beach, on the other there's a huge mountain range. Pilots say it's one of the scariest landings in the world and it's easy to see why. So just ahead there is the A340, that's flown in from Paris. So the people on there have been on board for about eight hours and 30 minutes. Now the landing just behind us, the runway length is about 7,000 feet, but traditionally aircrafts of that size need about 8,000 feet to land safely. So there's only a tiny margin of error, if any. It's the second busiest airport in the Caribbean, and as exciting as it is to watch landings from Mayho Beach, it's even more thrilling to see aircraft take off. And this is what they call jet blasting. So in a minute, we're gonna all get pushed back. Wow, it's already starting. Woo! Jet blasting is when you stand as close as you can get to an airplane taking off. And there are not many places in the world where you'd be able to get this close. Yeah, it became an attraction just on its own. Rolando Breeson is the director of tourism. He's tasked with making sure visitors have fun and don't injure themselves. In 2012, this jet blasting video went viral. It shows a woman being blown off her feet after losing her grip by deliberately standing in the jet blast of a plane taking off here. Fortunately, she didn't suffer any life-changing injuries, but it did prompt authorities to act by erecting more fences to increase the distance between people and jets. We had to take whatever measures we could, and fencing did create at least a bit of, a little more separation that was necessary, another 10 feet of space, you know, to try and prevent people from getting just too close. The security aspect, you know, patrolling when it's a, during the busy time to make sure it's not too many people that, you know, that we can keep it under control. But the fencing is an important part. There's an international standard for it as well. How far should an aircraft be from the road? So that fence it was able to make sure that we abide by those international standards. But it's next to impossible to police this beach 24 hours a day. And it's an activity that still draws hundreds of visitors daily. Was you worried? Was you scared it might be dangerous? We, yeah, we were worried, depending how hard they rev the engines. But the first one wasn't bad, but the third one, yeah. that was crazy. Crazy, was crazy, crazy, crazy. crazy. And despite jet blasting being seen as a young but risky sport, the island is trying to appeal to a younger crowd because the majority of those coming here are in their 50s and 60s. St. Martin is traditionally known as a musical island, so you'll find all sorts here from reggae music to samba to calypso. But a new music festival is aiming to bring something uniquely different to the island. Now in its second year, the SXM Festival, aptly named after the country's airport code, is hoping to bring a new kind of visitor. Millennials for a five-day electronic music extravaganza with more than a hundred top-name DJs. A lot of the basic roots of what is modern dance music culture uh, started in the Caribbean. It started with sound system culture in Jamaica and all of these other places. Uh, you know, the guys who bring the massive systems out, they would experiment with sound. They start experimenting with dubs and it's, this is where remixes came from. So there's a long uh, history and tradition to kind of electronic music and experimentation in the Caribbean. But some locals didn't want an electronic music festival on their shores. They wanted this little known island to be their best kept secret and remain exclusive. Not everyone was happy, of course, but I think it's because of the style of music. You know, that type of music in general scares people because 
people are look different, they dress different. So last year, that's how it kind of felt. But I, I think everyone, all the businesses realized, you know, the importance of having such a such a, an event. The festival takes place every March and attracts about 4,000 people. It's the brainchild of Julian Prince, a lifelong DJ and music promoter from Canada, who wanted to create something unique away from the club scene in places like Ibiza. Ibiza is like the motherland, it's everything, you know, they, they build this culture. So it's not like we're trying to like compete or... It's just honestly I thought that for the longest time ever, um, nothing was really happening in North America. And I just felt like we should have something like that during the winter. Everybody's from like up north and it's cold and they need the place to go where it's hot and like you cannot beat the island vibe. Get sunshine. Sunshine. And despite this event still in its infancy, the future looks bright as organisers are already planning next year's event. And as other festivals around the globe begin to tire or become too commercial, with the Caribbean as its backdrop, music is only part of the reason why SXM has the advantage.